So guys, according to this gentleman over here in the next couple of weeks, there will be 20 to 30% market crash. This guy also indirectly suggests major defaults on regional banks, simply because we'll be coming from unsatisfied loan obligations due to the car loans, due to the mortgage. And he explains very well why there is a major dump in equities on the open market from wealthy individuals and institutions. Larry, I'm curious, you, you made the comment that there's some sort of pending crash coming up in, in 60 days. Uh, I mean, that's a pretty Within bold statement. Days. I mean, that's what he's getting from his Lehman indicators. He talks I, to so many institutions every day. Go ahead. But, but I mean, 60 days, Larry, I mean, are you really, do you really believe that your, your indicators are, are, are right and that there's some sort of crash when you have the most amount of people ever making the most amount of money, ever spending the most amount of money, ever, and it's translating into earnings that, uh, while not stellar, are, are, are enabling revenues to actually rise? Go ahead, Larry. Well, remember, um, if you have $10 million, in the stock market two years ago, you're flat, okay? So there's a lot of people that have had money in the market for a long time, all these failed rallies, that's beating on the psychology of investors, number one. Number two, $10 million in cash today generates $510,000 a year in treasuries, in one, you know, one year treasuries. Wow. Okay, think about that. A year ago, you're talking, if this was $70,000. We have to do the math here, okay? Common sense. So you're, you're even in the market, you've been in the market for two years in these moronic fang stocks that have gone nowhere, right? The most crowded trade on earth. You're flat to down after two years. And now you're looking over at a money market fund or a one year treasury and you get $510,000 of interest risk free when a year ago you were getting 70. All right, in other Who words, what, what you're trade? saying, Larry, what you're saying, Larry, if I'm hearing you right, I'll, 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 I'll let you run with this, uh, is that effectively that the, 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 the average investor is smart enough to recognize there's now a choice between stocks and bonds. So that average investor is going to say, I'm going to sell my stocks and I'm going to go buy bonds and just make 5%. Is that basically where you're getting the notion? Yeah, that's exactly that, what he's right? saying. There's real competition now to stocks. If I'm going to make half a million dollars in fixed income, what the hell am I, uh, right. you know, dithering around in the stock market if, in fact, I'm worried about a profit recession? Is that right, Larry? Maria, let me ask you a question. Maria, Elaine Gazzarelli in the 80s, right? And, and you were probably too young for this, right? I remember Elaine Gazzarelli. No, no, I remember. She was a real you know, long-time bull. Well, she was a long-time bull, but you know what flipped her is her model. She had this risk-free model versus equities. And it made her so famous because in the summer of 2007, the risk-free rate up went up so much, she flipped to bearish because of that risk-free rate threat to equities. I'm seeing a similar dynamic now. Another an incredible stat is twos, tens, or 100 basis points inverted. So that means the two-year treasury is 100 basis points more than tens. That's threatening. But then on top of that, you look at the underperformance of the regional banks. So your regional banks are your classic canary in the coal mine. They're underperforming the S&P by like six, seven, eight percent over the last six, nine months a year. So the regional banks are telling you something really bad is happening under the surface in commercial real estate, auto loans, residential. There's really massive cracks under the surface. And that's why the market probably goes down 10, 20 percent, maybe 30 percent the next 60 days. 10, 20, 30 percent in the next 60 days. Essentially, guys, what he's trying to portray over here is that the market conditions have changed and have changed for a very long time looking forward. Uncertainty on the market has transformed the fixed income. He explains who in their right mind having 10 million dollars being individual with a very good portfolio value or institutions won't accept the offer making a passive income risk-free over $500,000 per year. Instead of going every single day and battling with the short sellers, battling with glitches on New York Stock Exchange or other exchanges, battling with the Federal Reserve for Treasuries, debt ceiling, why would you do all this? Why would you get glued to the screen every single day following the new policies from the Fed, following the macroeconomic or geopolitical situation across the globe? Why you, you can make a $500,000 doing nothing. And this is not simply changing the objective and taking advantage of better fixed income positioning on the market. He explains that the whole surface level, there is a certain financial instruments and financial products that are suffering big time. And he said the main indicator that indicates that something is boiling are the regional banks. You will see plenty of offers from regional banks 
for as sign up bonuses something that you haven't seen and when you see that they're extremely generous offering you two three hundred four hundred dollars just to sign up and some of them are even offering without direct deposit you realize that something very very interesting is happening under the surface he said that a lot of the people who actually took on car loans who took on mortgages most likely from these regional banks are incapable to satisfy their payment requirements so guess what there will be defaults expecting coming on these particular loans and on top of that this is a big major issue for these regional banks as you may have guessed would they be able to seek help if they needed to from the central banks sure but will the fed actually issue a, a separate bailouts for these banks i'm not quite sure how this is actually going to work especially since yesterday's and today's presentation from jerome powell so if Jerome Powell cannot help with the money printing machine anymore, how these banks will actually satisfy the criteria and help to fill the potential liquidity gap coming from uh, these bad loans? Yeah.